gathering community and friends. Uh, welcome to my home again. Uh, we had an interesting morning, so we're splicing some things together. We had interruptions and technological difficulties, um, but you know, it's just part of live streaming from your home. Um, I love this idea of meeting in homes. I know some of you are going to meeting, be meeting together this evening in homes to listen to the live stream or at another time, and praise God for that. You know, that's where the church started, and we're getting to, to embody that. And, and I love that. Um, we're actually living into the ways of Jesus. And uh, as I remind us every week, uh, we believe as a community that following Jesus is the best way to live. We really believe that. And the way in which we do that is we're striving and learning together to live and love like Jesus. And um, that's an amazing thing. And we're getting to experience that. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that this morning. But as we continue to live and love like Jesus, just a few announcements um, for us. Um, this afternoon... At 1 o'clock, uh, we're going to be meeting down at the church. We did communicate that to as many folks who'd like to help volunteer as we prepare to begin to possibly regather in our facility. There's, there's some training and procedures that need to take place, and if you'd like to, we'll meet out in front of the church uh, this afternoon to do that. Um, also, our food pantry just continues to be meeting huge needs in our community. 
We fed 115 families this week. It's a wonderful work of God through all of the churches working together. Church Without Walls, the pastors that I pray with, uh, New Life, Amigos de Jesus, A Sacred Heart, New Hope, um, uh, The River Church. I mean, all the churches working together um, to help make this happen. And if you'd like to volunteer, uh, you can help us on Mondays and Wednesdays. From 12 to 2, we collect food, and from 2 to 4, uh, we hand out food. And I'll tell you what, it's an amazing thing to be a part of. Uh, we also have our growth groups meeting uh, via Zoom during the week, Monday and Tuesday, 7 o'clock. And if you're not in one, we'd love to have you. It gives you a chance to grow deeper in relationship with one another and our relationship with God. And then we also have one on Wednesday at 6.30, a little bit early. We'd love to have you connect with us in our groups. And then we will continue to do our live stream on Fridays on Facebook. Had technological difficulties last Friday. We're unable to do it, so we did it on Zoom. But we're going to shoot for this again on Friday, and I think it's going to be a part of our everyday rhythm. It's just neat to be able to seek God together as a church and recognize that as we pray, we are praying alongside God's people throughout the world, seeking His face and, and boldly requesting and coming to Him. So I would encourage you to join us if you can for that. So um, lastly, um, I want to thank all of you for continuing to tithe and give throughout this season. And um, since we're not meeting at church, there's different ways that you can do that. You can give online at our website, thegatheringchurch.net. You can text, you can download the church app that looks like this, or mail and drop off. And we appreciate it. Um, as our ministry continues, we still have expenses, and it's through your support that we're able to continue to support those expenses as a church. So as we continue to worship, I might just want to open up in prayer, and we'll sing a couple more songs um, and uh, worship our Father in Heaven. So, um, yeah, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks this morning for the love that you have for us and the many ways that you provide for us. We give thanks that in all circumstances you are at work in us and around us even when we can't see it, you're at work. We ask, Lord, today that our offering of all that we have and all that we are would be a sweet, sweet fragrance to you. Father, you're the one who gives life. You give love. You bring light into the darkest places. You restore our broken hearts. You are so, so good to us. Lord, help us as we search for answers in a very confusing world. Lord, we ask that you would help us to be people of peace. Use us to bring reconciliation to all injustices. And help us, Lord, help us to generously give of ourselves to anyone in need. And may our lives be a perfect reflection of you as your children. Lord, may every breath we take remind us of your Spirit, the Holy Spirit in us. Lord, we ask, Lord, we seek, and we pray for more of you. You give life, you are love. hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your So we pour out our praise. 
pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise Perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your situated let me get um, my guitar put away here and if you've got a Bible open up to Matthew 6 uh, we're going to be in Matthew 6 continuing our journey on the Sermon on the Mount and um, yeah let me get myself set up here get all my stuff together and technology and uh, We'll be, we will be good to go. We will be good to go. I think that 
maybe Betsy and I started it, and you need to know that's not how this happened. So the story of the food pantry is this. Um, when we all immediately had to stay in place, to, to be shut in in place, um, I recognized that, oh my gosh, how are people going to get to stores? How are people going to begin to get stuff? And so I re had remembered decades ago that there was a church that created like a Craigslist kind of website. And having a Craigslist kind of website, all it had on it was, I can help in this way, and I need help in this way. And then they would just find each other and connect. And I thought, maybe we could do that. So I approached Susan, our admin, volunteer admin, and we need to love on Susan. We need to love on her. And, um, and she said she'd be willing to do that. So we started to administrate it. And um, we found out that there was another movement going on. There's a movement called Love Our Cities, which we're going to be a part of. And it's a Christian uh, uh, thing where all churches are working together to love their cities. And in doing that, um, they started something when the COVID stuff hit called Love Our Neighbors. And as they started this, they literally were doing the same thing, but they didn't have a lot of support out here on the east, on the west side. And so since we're on the west side, um, I reached out and contacted them and they said, oh, we'd love to have you guys help us. Would you mind to do that? And so Susan, I asked her and she said, sure. So we got administrative access. And so we started to pay attention to the needs out here. And we thought it'd be a all kinds of different needs, but the needs that came up were food. And so we approached the food pantry here in downtown, and they started preparing boxes for us, and we started going out making deliveries, and then we realized this food thing is going to escalate. And so as the food needs started to go up, we realized it was going to be, it was going to be very, very large and very, very big. So I approached um, uh, New Life and Trulock, who's helping us with this. Uh, Tito and Jeremy uh, are the Patterson campus pastors. And they got me a list, and so we created a list, and we started it sending out to many of you, and you started bringing stuff. And then I asked uh, the Ross kids, um, Sammy and Lainey, if they would make some posters for us, just on poster board, and we put them on A-frames, put out there, and we started the food pantry. And you need to know, the very first week, we had 10 families. And then what started to happen was, um, what started to happen was the numbers just started to go up, and the needs started to go up. And as the need went up, and people were noticing it, and they wanted to make donations, we had people who started donating money. And then um, as people started donating money, uh, the Patterson Chamber of Commerce asked if they could help us out, and they created a GoFundMe page, and people started donating money through that. And so we actually then at that point needed people to go shopping. So then we had people who would go shopping. They'd go to Winco, they'd go to Walmart, and they would buy groceries. And the donations kept coming in as the need continued to increase. And as the need continued to increase, the community found out about it. The, the irrigator kept writing articles weekly on it, and the donations just started to come in. Uh, Pepsi started donating stuff through um, Amigos de Jesus, Caesar, the pastor there, started bringing a, a flatbed trailer full of, of snacks and stuff like that from Pepsi. Um, all of a sudden, we started getting stuff from the USDA, farm to families. In fact, now we get a pallet with 70 boxes of mixed vegetables and fruit and meat. Um, we got uh, the Lions Club wanted to start to get involved. They donated $5,000 towards the cause and 5,000 cans of food. And even yesterday, donated 250 pounds of prepackaged rice for us to be able to give out. It's just got this life. It's got this life that's going on. This is something that God started, something that God started, and we're just joining in with him. And we're recognizing that as we do this, God is blessing us so that we can be a blessing to others. We're joining God in something that he isn't doing, something that he started, and it's out of that that God is blessing people. So as we have joined God in what he's doing, he continues to provide all that we need to meet the need. And as we are loving those who are in need, as Jesus called us to do, we are living the Jesus way. We continue to get blessed, and hear me on this, we continue to get blessed in real time to be a blessing in real time to others. Real life stuff, and others are wanting to join us in that. The community of Patterson is joining in us being Jesus and taking care of those that are in need. We've had a really neat thing happen where one family that has been blessed by this has chosen to come down and volunteer. They want to volunteer because they have been blessed. They want to be a blessing to others. That, that's Jesus stuff. That is the real thing that people are experiencing, and they want to join in it. That is the Jesus way. So, in the series we're in the Jesus way, um, where have we been? So I begin here every Sunday um, with the words of Jesus from the way in which his ministry began. He said these words. He said, repent and believe. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is here. Repent meaning the way in which you've been living your life. Do you recognize that it's not working? 
Do you recognize that it's not working? I want you to turn and go in a new direction. Follow me in a new direction. Believe. Trust. Enter into a relationship with me. And I'm going to show you how to live life the way God intended it. The kingdom way. Jesus went on to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and life. And no one gets access to the Father except through me. He's saying, I am the way. Turn and go in a new direction. I am the truth. Believe in me. And I am the way. Follow me. Follow me. And you'll get to experience all the life that God has for you. An abundant life. A kingdom life. Even in the midst of difficult circumstances. These are the essentials to following Jesus. Then as we've been in um, the Sermon on the Mount, which is what we're spending time in right now, these are the words, the teachings of Jesus that the disciples got to hear over and over and over again, real time as they lived out their faith with Jesus. As they lived out their faith with Jesus. And he began it with these words, Blessed are, blessed are, for they will. Blessed are, for they will. And they're living in the tension of the now and of yet. Yeah. <laughs> definitely in my house definitely in my house people come to the door okay um, Jesus is saying blessed are for they will and this whole idea of blessed are is that you can have joy now and the now and not yet blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will see justice living in that and Jesus is telling us we can have joy in the midst of the world becoming more of the way the world that Jesus, the more that God wanted. Jesus keeps going on now and saying, you've heard it said, but I say this. You've heard it said, but I say this. He's, he's recognizing what people have been living into and what they've been hearing. And he's saying, you know what? I need to tell you the truth in terms of what kingdom life looks like. And that's where we've been sitting in the teaching. So let's open up to Matthew chapter 6. And maybe we'll have the next section here. of No interruption. Crazy this morning. Crazy this morning. God must want us to hear this if there's this much interruption going on. If there's this much interruption going on. All right. So in Matthew 6, verses 1 through 4. Okay. The words of Jesus. Watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others. For you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private, and your Father who sees everything will reward you. Let's pray. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Uh, Lord, I ask that you would um, open up our hearts, that you would clear our minds, so that we might hear what you have for us today. Oh Lord, I pray that what I say, what I share, is helpful, it's truthful, and it's pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So Jesus, in this passage today, continues this heart theme. And what he's saying is, you know what, God cares more about what's going on inside of you because what goes on inside of us is actually why we do what we do. Our actions are guided by our hearts. I've heard it said that out of a healthy, right heart comes good things. I've also heard it said that out of an unhealthy, wounded heart comes things that rob us of life. The condition of our heart matters. So as I was reflecting on this passage this week, one of the words that stood out to me was this idea of motive. Why do we do what we do? What's my motive? What drives me to do the things that I do? So these were some questions I was reflecting on. Do we do things because what we will, of what we will get out of it? Do we do things because we have to? Do we do things because we're compelled to? Do we do things to gain the admiration and praise of other people? Do we do what we do just out of sheer obedience? Or do, what, or do we do what we do out of fear? Jesus is challenging his disciples, his followers in this moment. And what he's saying is there is a great reward. When something is done with the right heart, the reward is greater than anything the world can offer. 
I believe when we do things out of a heart of love, our motive is love, we experience a kingdom reward. When we do things out of love, we are a reflection of the Father's heart. We are a reflection of Jesus' heart. We are experiencing a love. And we're extending a love through the Holy Spirit in us. A heart motivated by love not only changes our lives, but it changes the lives of the recipients of that love. From the very beginning, from the very beginning of God's story in the life of his people, he told Abraham, I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing to others. John writes, we're able to love others because God first loved us. If we love others, it's because we have the love of the Father in us. Jesus made it very, very clear over and over again. He commanded this. Our love for God needs to be equally matched by our love for people. Jesus even says, I want you to freely give as freely as you have received. Paul, the Apostle Paul, challenges the early church in Rome. He says, don't conform to the ways of the world, but instead be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Be transformed by the renewing of your minds. And I think in this passage today that Jesus gave us a very practical way to change our hearts, to have our hearts transformed, to have our motives changed. And I think it's through this gift of giving. The practice of giving, you need to know, is something that his disciples knew well. The culture knew it well. And for whatever reasons they gave, they knew that it was important to God. Jews knew in practice that everything came from God. And that included this concept of the tithe, 10%, the first fruits, the best that you were supposed to give back to God. It was called the first fruit because the minute God blessed you, you would give him his portion back. They, were, they knew that the tithe was in the giving that God had given them. So you always gave that first fruit, that 10%, you give it back to God because it's his. You're just giving back to God what is his. Jews knew that they were called to give beyond that. They were... They're called to get beyond the tithe to support what God was doing. And you see it throughout the Old Testament. You see where they're practicing that. Where to have the full presence of God, they gave and they gave and they gave so that the presence of God would be among them. Jews also knew that they were called to give alms. And all almsgiving is is where you recognize that there are people in need and you give generously to those that are in need. Almsgiving. And that's what Jesus is talking about in this passage today. Jesus knows that it's a given that these people tithe. He knows that it's a given that they give offerings to what God is doing. But this next level, this discussion is about the giving of alms, the giving to those in need. You need to know that Jesus did speak of the tithe. He spoke of it. He taught it. And he addressed the disciples about it one time as people were going into the temple to drop off their tithes, their offerings. And he looks at the disciples and he says, as they're watching this whole thing play out, he, he says, who do you think gave more? So as the wealthy people come in, drawing attention to themselves and drop large amounts of money out of the abundance of what they have, there's this woman nearby them who's poor. And she's giving all that she has. And he asks the disciples, who do you think is giving more? Who is giving the most? Who is giving the greatest gift back to God? And he points to the woman and he says, these guys over here are giving out of their abundance. She is giving out of her poverty. That is the heart of God. That is my heart. That is the offering that God loves. The early church experienced the practice of giving. If you remember in Acts, the church is just experiencing amazing things as they devote their lives together. All of the practices, eating meals together, fasting, praying, they're seeing signs and wonders going on in people's lives. And there's a guy, Barnabas, who sees that there are needy people in the midst of this early church and this early community. And you know what he does? He goes off and he sells his land and he brings all of it. And he gives it to the apostles so that they can take care of the needy. This generosity. And Barnabas gave because he said, God's doing a work here. I want to be a part of it. He's blessed me, so I'm going to do this so that God continued to do that work. But now we have Jesus speaking to the giving of alms. And he is specifically addressing the motive for giving. He's recognizing that in their time, those that are giving to the poor and needy, many of them are doing it publicly. They're literally making a celebration out of it. They're doing it 
They're tithing, they're giving, and now they're giving them alms. They do it to draw attention to themselves so people will think highly of them. And you know what Jesus says? If you're giving in such a way just to draw the admiration of people, to be celebrated by people for your amazing generosity, Jesus says these strong words. He says, guess what? That's the only reward you're going to get. That's the only reward you're going to get. Jesus challenges them. Guys, tithe, give, take care of others in need without others knowing. Do it without others knowing. Now, obviously, you can't give with one hand and not have the other hand know. I mean, think about that. You give with this hand, this hand is not going to know. I mean, they're both on your body. How are you going to not know? But I think Jesus is making a huge point here. He's saying that your motive should come from a generous heart. Just as your Father in heaven is generous in his generosity to you, you are to bless others. And when he sees how generous you are, he's going to give you more, knowing that you will bless others with it. There's this great story in the Gospels about a moment in ministry where Jesus and the disciples have had a long day healing people, sharing about the kingdom, sharing about what life is going to look like for them, and the crowds are huge, and there's no food. And Jesus is recognizing, the disciples are recognizing, these fifths are hungry, and we need to take care of them. But they don't have anything. They don't have anything. And in one account, Jesus asks Philip, he goes, what's out there? What's out there? And Philip brings this boy to him, and the boy has five loaves and two fish. And it says that they took the food from this boy and that Jesus blessed it. And then they fed thousands of people. You know what gets left out in the story often when it's told is the boy. We can forget about the boy. You know, if, if this boy had been like most of us, he would have said, you know, I need to eat. This is my lunch. My mom gave this to me. This is for my family. But no, this little boy had an opportunity to be a blessing. He gave all that he had. He gave all that he had. Jesus blessed it and took and met the needs of thousands of people. And as the accounts go, when they collected after it was over, there was more food than what they started with. This little boy had a willingness. He didn't need to be known. We don't know his name. We don't celebrate him. But here's this young man who's literally doing that. The left hand doesn't know what the right. We're not celebrating the boy. We're celebrating what God has done. And God blessed it because he gave out of his abundance. You know, there's another type of giving that Jesus speaks about often. And that's called grace giving. It's, it's the heart of God. It's the heart of Jesus. And, and I think this is how you find this heart for grace giving. It's when you ask God, what am I to do with what you just blessed me with? So whenever we receive something, we ask the question, God, what is it that you want me to do with what you just blessed me with? It's recognizing where it came from and saying, God, you gave this to me. You're trusting me with this. What is it that you want me to do with it? Another aspect of grace giving is this idea when you hear of a need, you hear of a need and you ask God the question, God, how can I meet that need? And then you respond. That's called grace giving. That's living graciously every day. And I think that helps us to live incredibly generous lives. And then we get to experience something that, man, the world just can't give us. Something happens when you're able to live generously and give to others. Let me ask this question. When should others know? When should others know? Because Jesus is saying, don't let others know. But when should others know? I know it says in Scripture that we are called to spur each other on to good works or to good deeds. To spur them on to live generously. I think there's moments for that. I mean, the food pantry right now is getting acknowledged, but it's getting acknowledged as a work of God. And it's causing other people to want to join it and live generously too. So it's being made known. But it's not being made known that this person or it's this person is behind it. God is behind it. The church community is behind it. The community of Patterson is behind it. We celebrate that and God continues to bless it. I think as part of us learning and growing, God will send people into our lives who live generously and we're going to find out about it and we're going to be challenged by it. 
Uh, there was a couple in, in our church that Betsy and I knew very, very well when our children were young. And we were hanging out with them. And um, it was Christmas Eve, and we asked them what they were going to be doing for Christmas Eve. You know, people have traditions and everything. And they were actually rushing off after the Christmas Eve service. And I was kind of like, why are you guys in such a rush? And they said, because we, we do this thing every year uh, for someone in our neighborhood. And I'm like, wait, wait, what? you got to tell me more. Well, apparently every year they identified a needy family in their neighborhood. And they knew of one family that had a lot of needs pretty often. And so they would celebrate the 12 days of Christmas. And so they would do something leading up to Christmas recognizing what their needs were and leaving a gift on their porch, but the people never knew who dropped it off for them. And I believe they also dropped off an entire Thanksgiving uh, provision box for this same family every year. And I remember when Betsy and I heard that, we were like, oh my gosh, that, wow, that is so God-like, that is so Jesus-like, and it caused us to reflect with our family, how can we be more generous? How can we be more generous? I know that in my life, um, I meet with a spiritual director. I've always had one in my life consistently. And it always comes up in the conversation in terms of my own walk with Christ. Peter, you need to have a practice, a spiritual discipline in your life where you do something that nobody knows about. You do something in the life of somebody else that nobody knows about because that's really the heart of God, and it, it's going to change you by doing that. It's going to change you by doing that. The heart that lives generously is an other-centered heart, is an others-centered heart. It is a spiritual discipline to be generous to others without knowing. It really checks our motives, and it's a practice that makes our heart like God's heart, and that is the Jesus way. But please hear me on this. The Apostle Paul writes this to the church in Corinth, and I think it's really important for us to hear this. Because it is about motive. The Apostle Paul writes, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. You hear that? Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. And why? Paul goes on to write, God loves a cheerful giver. Another translation writes, God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. Another translation love, writes, and I love this one, because God loves hilarious generosity. What if we were so generous the world would look at us like we're such fools? <laughs> they would laugh at us. That's incredible generosity. The reward is kingdom rewards that you get to see real time when you live generously. And the greatest joy is being generous like God. When you get to bless others like he does, there's nothing like it. And the rich reward may be greater in heaven when we get to see the fruit of the seeds that were planted and led people to Jesus through the gift of our generosity. That is the Jesus way. Well, um, I shared with you this morning uh, what God put on my heart. Apologize for the interruptions with the live stream. Um, but um, I'd like you to take a moment, as we always do. What did you hear this morning? And what do you think God's asking you to do with what you heard? Well, um, I pray that um, God will um, bless you richly so that you can be a blessing to others. I pray that God will bless you richly so you can be a blessing to others. And it doesn't matter how much he's blessed us, whether it's a small blessing or a huge blessing. Father, I ask that you help all of us to receive your blessing and know that all of our blessings come from you and that we would ask the question, Father, what is it that you want me to do with what you've blessed me with? That we may be a blessing to others, that they may come to know Jesus in the kingdom life that we have found. Hey, have a great day, and uh, we will see you soon. We will see you soon. Hugs.